Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Coffee and Cards. I am Jennifer Merle Hampshire, your hostess with the mostess this morning. And welcome to Coffee and Cards. I am getting my iPad ready. Um, I hope everyone is having a gorgeous day. I know that the weather for sure. Morning, Becky and Tammy and Nancy. How's everybody this morning? Morning, Paula. Going to be a lot going on today. We're going to seize the day. That's what the side of my cup says. Hmm. I hope everybody is enjoying this gorgeous morning. And I want to do a couple of reminders. Um, if you have not used your bonus day codes, you only have until the end of the month to use those codes. I have a current host code, but I forgot to print it out. Um, and of course, it's on my phone, which is our camera. I also want to remind you about the new paper pumpkin next month, which will be September, will be the Halloween kit. And then let's not forget, we've got what? two weeks maybe until the holiday catalog goes live. I'm getting kind of excited. I hope everybody else is too. Um, if you do not have your catalog, then please go ahead and shoot me a message, a text, a call, whatever, and we'll get you one. I was, I was uh, actually just talking to my dad via text message. He he um, was talking to me about my blog post from this morning, which I thought was kind of funny. Um, it, it, it always cracks me up some of the things that he notices. And uh, he says that he needs to start um, checking my blog posts on his iPad because then he'll be able to see the pictures better. But, which I thought was funny. Um, but let's get down to business because I got a lot of stuff I want to talk to you about today. I want to talk about a couple of different things. We're going to be talking about the Marvelous Markers versus the Stampin' Blends and the Memento Ink versus the Stazon. And there's lots of questions about these things. And I get it. Totally understand why there's these questions. I'm going to stick with the beautiful day stamp set that I've been using um, for the Stampin' Blends only because this butterfly, I'm sorry, but this butterfly, have you seen the blog post, you guys, for this? This butterfly is amazing. And that flower isn't so shabby either. Or how about that? And yes, there's shimmer paint on there. So, wowza wowza. Now, if you're joining in after the live video, please don't forget to do the hashtag replay so that I can... Um, I can make sure that I see who's watching the videos. That and let's talk um, about a prize. I love prizes. Um, I have one from last week and it actually goes to Miss Nancy. Miss Nancy gets some of the wood element butterflies back from celebration. And this week's... Um, prize is um, some handmade cards, which may or may not include one of those. Who knows? 
Um, I will share that with you next week. Hi. You're welcome, Nancy. Let's get into it because we got a lot to cover. First off, I want to share with you, I have three different types of paper here. I have the regular white. I have watercolor paper. And then I have the thick white, Whisper White cardstock. And there is different purposes for different papers. So I'm going to get started. And we're going to go with the Marvelous Markers first. Because that one's kind of easy. Um, so we're going to start out slow and we're going to work our way up. So I'm going to put the, the Stampin' Blends to the side. And we're going to take this gorgeous butterfly. And not just because it's a butterfly, but it's actually super easy to color. Now, I want to show you, just like on the Stampin' Blends, and here we'll do it this way. Each side or each pen has a brush side and a point side. So when we're doing this, we want to work off the side with the marvelous markers. And we're going to kind of color in right on the image that we want to stamp. And you cannot do this with the Stampin' Blends, cannot, because it's an alcohol-based marker and it dries too quickly to use for this effect. And I am using both. Of the colors here and I am kind of blending in on the edges just a little bit to kind of mix the color and we want to make sure we get all the areas and then here's the key this is the magic right here the magic is that you need to huff and what the huffing does is, is it re-moistens the ink. And then I'm using the regular white and I'm gonna stamp the butterfly image. Now I did not do the antennae on this and I probably should have. And then there's our image with the marvelous markers. See how I blended in the color and all of that? All right, so the next thing, and this can be done with both the red rubber and the photopolymer. I do find, however, that it is, you get a, I find that it's easier with the red rubber you got to go over with the photopolymer. You have to go over that several times to get the desired effect, which is not a bad thing. Sometimes I just get impatient. All right, so there's that. So that you can only do this type of technique with the Marvelous Markers. That or regular ink, obviously. But... To be able to do, you can even do a no line watercolor with this because using, I have a full aqua painter and I don't have a paper towel, of course. I went, oh, yes I do. Here's one. You want to bring down your water. Now, should not do this with the regular white, and I wasn't thinking when I stamped it. But you can pull that image when you do it on the watercolor. So let's do it again, just because I want to be able to show you 
the technique and I'm not gonna be able to do it on that. So if you wanna do a no line watercolor image. And I know it doesn't look like that Highland Heather is getting on there, but it is. And then we're going to do, again, this is Balmy Blue and Highland Heather are the colors that I'm using. And I think for this, I'm going to do the antennae in the, in the balmy blue, just for this one. Let me go over, because I got to be honest, I don't remember if I hit this or not. I did. All right, we're going to huff again. and we're gonna stamp. You guys are sure quiet, no questions? I thought for sure there would be questions flying today. All right, so there's on our watercolor paper, and we're gonna take our watercolor, or our aqua painter, and we're going to Pull in some of this color. And I'm guessing we're going to have to go with adding some ink. There we go. Just a little. And this can be as dark or as light as you want. Then between colors, you want to make sure to clean your aqua painter off. I don't think, oh, I do have that, okay. Pull in some more of that color and there we go. You gotta get the paper wet First, Penelope, what are you getting into over there? And that really didn't get into the no line, did it? But that's the concept that we're looking for. There's our watercolor. Give you a closer view so you can see the hues, the light color in there. And you can go back through and it's just kind of like the Stampin' Blends. If you wanna mix in some color, um, you gotta create your layers and it's easy because it's wet. So if you want, you know, parts of it a little bit darker, you pull in a little bit more color. Just like that. And then just kind of work it in. Okay? How are we doing so far? Yeah, Penelope is this definitely a snoopervisor. Okay, so there's that. Now, now we're going to talk real quick 
about stays on versus memento. Now, stays on you need for watercolors. Memento you need for the alcohol based markers. Why? I'm going to show you why. I'm going to show you the difference. Side by side comparison. So we're going to do, I'm going to clean this off again. Sorry. And because, and I chose the lighter colors on purpose. Stays on. Ink. Here. And this is our thick white cardstock. And then stays on ink. Here for watercolor. We're going to clean this off, close this up. And no matter what, I'd have to clean this off, you guys. I'm sorry. I only have one stamp. It's not even my stamp. I want to give a shout out to Corinne for letting me borrow this stamp set. All right. I know that she'll be watching the hashtag replay. All right. And then here's the memento ink. on the thick white cardstock. Now, let's mark it. This side is M for memento, this side is S for stays on, and then this side is S for stays on, and so there's no doubts on the shenanigans that I'm running over here. And this side, I'm not gonna get the whole butterfly on this one, you guys, is the memento. And I'm pushing down on this pretty good, you guys. Trying to get a good image. I don't mind a little bit of that crackle. I think it adds to it. So, all right, and we're gonna put an M over here for Memento. All right, so let's start with the watercolor side first, or the watercolor paper first. And you can see, it. even the watercolor bleeds through, you guys. All right, watercolor. We're gonna same, take the same two colors And here's a tip for you. These new colors, if you flip it over and push from the bottom, you get a bigger area. Just like that. Did I get ink on me? Of course I did. All right, watercolor. Moment or uh, stays on here, mementos here. I'm going to actually do it this way so that I can do one color at a time so that you guys can see. And I think we're going to do the blue in the middle this time, just something different. So the stays on first, and we don't lose our line. And you guys, here's another tip for you. If you wet first, 
your color will draw out better and you should get a better no line or a distinguished line between the two colors if you wet it first. And we're gonna do the same thing over here and see how that Memento ink, see how that water got gray compared to the other side? It pulls that Memento ink right away. I hope you guys can see that, looks like it. So let's switch. So for watercolors, note, stays on. Then let's switch to the Stampin' Blends. Same thing. Oh, goodness gracious, itchies, itchies. We're going to, and here's another thing. I've been working with the Stampin' Blends all week. Yes, Becky, exactly. It bleeds into your water, and then you won't get true color image. All right. Let's move these side to side here. Been doing a lot of Stampin' Blends the last couple of days on the blog. There's actually a how-to video as well on these, which is why I actually have like four of them. So, because I wanted to show you the different things you could do with it. Um, so, check out my YouTube channel. Link will be, um, the link is on my blog at whispersandink.net. Let's talk about Stampin' Blends here really quick. Kind of a review to the video. You, I usually work from lightest color to darkest because you can always add, but you can't take away. Technically, you can't take away. So we're gonna do these, we're gonna do these opposite. So here's, here's the stays on. And then actually I'm gonna do these the same. Here is the memento. Now I wanna show you something. I wanna bring this down a little bit more. Can you see the difference? The stays on, whoops, sorry, the stays on bled in a little bit to the ink. I'm gonna bring it back so you can see the two. This one is a little grayer hue to it than that one. And that is because the stays on reacts with the alcohol in the marker. Anybody have any questions? Hey, Becca. So stays on ink with the Stampin' Blends, no good. But Memento ink with watercolors, no good. So here's, those are the differences on the two, okay? Marvelous markers, only for stamps or, or the ink. You can't stamp with the Stampin' Blends like you can the Marvelous Markers. Anybody have any questions? Oh, oil changes are good. Anybody have any questions about any of that so far? Do I need to review anything? Do you wanna go back over anything? While I'm waiting for your responses, I'm gonna continue coloring this butterfly, the memento side of the butterfly. And I'm not gonna worry about going over you guys, the lines, cause you know I'll end up fussy cutting it out. Nothing, oh you guys. You guys are either really, really good or I covered it really, really well. Hopefully it was because I covered it really, really well. Nothing. All right. 
There's been a lot of questions about the differences, so I wanted to be sure to cover the differences. I know, Becca, you didn't make it. When you're doing Stampin' Blends Club, Becca, you're gonna need to go through and you're gonna wanna watch this video. Just so you know the differences. And we're gonna quick color this up. Um, we're going to go back to the light. Been doing a lot of, spending a lot of time in the tent. Last couple of days. It's been kind of fun. I will admit, I have enjoyed it. Yes, I am pressing hard with this marker, but that's the fine tip end. That's what's nice about using this thick cardstock, you guys. It may bleed through, but I've got to tell you, you put those many layers on this regular white. I'm going to show you what happened, the difference. Okay, only three layers on that regular white and it's even worse. So the thick cardstock is definitely the way to go for the paper. Definitely, definitely, definitely the way to go. All right, back to the blue. I do have a couple of watercolor, I have a watercolor card to show you. A blast from the past watercolor. I hope that you go and check out the blog post from today which has the Global Design Project Challenge, which also is using Stampin' Blends, if you guys haven't seen it yet. Yes, Becky, coloring is so relaxing. Hey, Nan. All right, so let's cut up some of this stuff. Didn't do a very good job of that one, but that's all right. Make a rough, oop, make a rough cut on that. And we'll also do a rough cut on this one. Actually, shoot. Actually, we don't have to do a rough cut on that one. I'm gonna pull out my trimmer. There we go. We'll use that 
And what background paper, guys? Should we use the Highland Heather for a background? Or should we use the Balmy Blue for a background? And while you guys are chatting amongst yourselves trying to figure out what to do, I am going to cut out the Stampin' Blends one really, really quick. So that I at least have one thing done. No comments yet. Goodness gracious. Balmy blue, Highland Heather, or a different color. We could even do a different color. Remember, we're layering that one. Oh, I saw something. Becky says Highland Heather. I'm so shocked by that, Becky. Anybody else? Nobody else. Okay. Decisions have been made then. Let me grab cardstock. As soon as I'm done. I'm almost done cutting that butterfly. Third wing. So those darn antennae. You have I have a hard time cutting around those. Because I don't want there to be too much white. Okay, we got that, that, and that. I think we're gonna cut that one a little different. All right, let's see what we got in the in the collection of. Well, we've got a Highland Heather collection of unloved cardstock. Ha ha. No, I don't want that. I think though. We're gonna have to cut up some cardstock. We're gonna cut that and we're gonna cut up one of these. And I grabbed more than one on the accident. Oh my gosh. Nancy! Nancy, you know what it says on your on your little thing? Apparently today is your following anniversary. So you must have followed me goodness knows how many years ago. Woohoo, Nancy! Oh, Penelope, you can't sit on my paper. All right, so there's that with that. I know what I'm gonna do with that. Here, we're gonna cut a card base of the balmy blue for that one. And actually, we're gonna cut a, I could have had this done. Sorry, you guys. I didn't know if we'd have enough time I anticipated questions. I didn't know we'd have enough time. All right, so the other thing we're gonna do is, I smell something burning. I moved my sponges. We're gonna take this, Ooh, sorry. No, I don't want her to sit on my stuff, Paula. That's the point. Sorry for the reach. This is one thing that I did also, you guys, on today's blog post. 
is the color wasn't exactly what I was wanting. So you can add, now watch this. Can you guys see the difference? Here, let me put it here. Can you see the, the, the crumb cake sponge there and there versus that? And it adds just another layer to the butterfly. So on, and I don't even know if that card, yes it is, I see it. So let's say, I don't even know if that card's on the table. I can show you what I'm talking about. Excuse my reach again. Talking about this card. I went over it with the sponge as well. So there's a lot going on on that card. All right, so there's the crumb cake. And... Closed it up, of course. Are you guys getting shaking? No. Okay. What is going on? There we go. Just sweeping that over. Kind of carrying it through. And apparently where my finger was, I got to do that part. There we go. Ink on my fingers now. So all I did was sweep this with crumb cake ink with the sponge. And we'll add that to that. And it's going to need some ribbon. There's no doubt about that. Let's do... Let's do this cutout. I think we're gonna put it on the blue. Yeah, we're gonna put it on, we're gonna actually make this card. We're gonna put this one, which is our Marvelous Marker um, sample. Gonna put that on there. We're gonna fold our card base. Like this. Let me get this out of here. Get that out of here, get this. We'll put this on this. And, hmm. Yes, no waste and use it all up, you bet. Tie a cute little bow, lickety splits. Maybe. What are you talking about no waste, Paula? No waste for the butterflies, the images? What, 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 what? I'm confused. Oh, shoot. There we go. Oh, I pulled some dimensionals out. And then this will be our one card for now.
check the blog post for the rest. Any questions about anything that we did or that you see, don't hesitate to put in the comments. Don't forget to start following my blog. Super easy. Would love to hear your comments. Here's our three different things. watercolor, marvelous markers, stamp and blends. You guys remember if you learned anything today. Hey Vicky, if you learned anything today, you know what to do. Um don't forget that if you're watching it later that um hashtag replay and thank you as always for joining me. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Have a great day getting crafty. Bye-bye.